Erev Tov, I'm Stephen Benoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live. This is a prophetic segment of our news, and mainly I wanted to bring this out to you as a prophetic segment because of the way the headlines keep popping up. And to give you an example here, uh, this is one that came out a few days ago. You can find these uh, articles on our uh, Facebook page, Israeli News Live. Just go to Israeli News Live on Facebook. You'll find our page here where we put in a lot of these articles. Uh, this one here was from TASS. Uh, says, Putin and Merkel to discuss Ukraine restoration of Russian-Germany cooperation. Seems that uh, Chancellor Merkel is getting a little bit fed up with NATO and the U.S.'s aggression to make a war with Russia. Uh, but at the same time, uh, while, and, and by the way, in that negotiation there, one of the main things that is to, was to be discussed was the implementation of the Minsk Agreement. Now, while Chancellor Merkel is starting to soften her stance, they could get back to business as usual with Russia, we have uh, another article here where it says, Poroshenko confirms Kiev uses ceasefire to rearm troops. And then again, we have another uh, one. This is all on TASS.ru uh, uh, forward slash EN if you want to see this in English. Ukraine militia warn right sector nationalists exercises in Donbass may escalate the conflict. So there seems to be no end of the escalation in Ukraine. And quite clearly, it seems in, in some other reports that we've heard about, that, uh, that like uh, General Bradlove wants to have a war with Russia. Uh, but as I begin to look at this, and I begin to, to start examining how does this lay out biblically uh, when, we, when we look at the allies involved. We know the United States is, is leading NATO. Of course, who leads the NATO, who leads the United States is not, none less than the Vatican. So we're fighting a Vatican war. Uh, you always see Catholics at the head of these uh, different governments, um, even the, uh, the uh, prime minister that was put in there into Ukraine when the government was overthrown was, of course, a staunch Catholic, Roman Catholic. And, uh, but anyone that is opposed to the Vatican's plans, they just send the United States in there to kill, maim, and destroy everything. And, of course, uh, the United States leads NATO, and they're uh, the allies that are mostly European nations, but there's other nations that are part of the NATO coalition. But when we begin to look at the other side of this, uh, Russia seems to be on the outside of all this uh, issue here, and now the battle is being picked with Russia. I guess the Pope is not happy that he's not taking over Russia, so he's pushing the United States to pick a fight with Russia. And in, in doing so, who are Russia's allies? Well, Iran clearly is one of their allies. And, and Iran, even though they have, they've uh, established some diplomatic ties with the Vatican, they're still a little shaky right there. They would favor more uh, siding with Russia in a conflict. And as well, another ally, but a NATO member, and that's Turkey. Of course, Turkey is always the one that throws the hair in the biscuit, so to speak, when it comes to the vote on, on UN resolutions. But Turkey is a strong ally as well with Russia. And when I begin to look at this, um, and of course I recently did a message with you guys about uh, Isaiah chapter 14 and looking at the Antichrist there, uh, the king of Babylon. And of course, as I've mentioned to you, it's definitely it's the Pope of Rome. But when you begin to look at all of this, and, and I've, had, I've, had, I've had you guys send before messages to me that, you know, Brother Steve, don't you think that Babylon would be the United States? Well, mystery Babylon is clearly Rome. But Babylon, to begin with, was a kingdom. And a kingdom is made up of a large region. And of course, the United States is part of the Babylonian control. So in essence, yes, the United States is Babylon but so are the NATO allies that are joined with her. But I would have to agree in, the, in principle here that the United States more is Babylon in the regards that that is the main fighting force Rome uses. Rome is just a little bitty country, but yet it can throw its weight around and its power. Even if it collapses the U.S.'s economy in the very near future, what will it do? It will only do it in order to rebuild up a new economy for the United States. So the, the collapse would be short-lived as they bring out the Vatican 
uh, euro maybe, or whatever you would want to call it. But anyway, let's take a look at the scripture here in Isaiah 13. And I know that there's others that have used this to, to, to point out the United States, because this is where God is going to bring judgment. So let's, I'm going to quickly go through this, but I'm going to point out some of the highlights that I've, that I've noticed myself. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. That's Isaiah chapter 13, verse 1. Lift you up a banner upon the high mountain, exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. Notice that, nobles. They're going into the gates of the nobles. So it's more than one place, okay? It's gates, plural, and nobles, plural. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones from mine anger, even them that rejoice in my, high, in, in my highness. Now, that's two different, or about three different groups of people there. Not all of them are sanctified ones, but some of those are just people that God can command to, do, to war. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of, of a great people, of a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together, the Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Now, I thought that was interesting. To the ends of heaven. Remember when God spoke about Israel when he would scatter them to the four corners of the earth? I think another place it says to the ends of the earth. And of course, Israel being scattered all the way into the far reaches of Russia, even out into Iran, places like that. That was considered the ends of the earth, especially during the time of the prophecy. So I just thought that was an interesting note there. And they shall be afraid... Uh, uh, excuse me, back to verse 6. How ye for the day of the Lord is at hand, and he shall come as a destruction from the all uh, shall come as from the as a destruction from the Almighty. There shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid, pains and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth, they shall be amazed. Uh, one at another, their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel both with wrath and Fearest anger to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Um, for the stars of heaven and the constellations uh, thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be turned, shall be darkened, and, go, and going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. It's kind of interesting there. I mean, I just look at this and I see how that the battles have been raged around the world. And, and quite clearly, we've, you know, as Americans, we've really been involved a lot of conflicts worldwide. Now, I know we've always believed, and in, in, in myself included, that we've always done this for the sake of democracy, for freedom of religion. As we see the way the laws are about to change in the United States, there's not going to be freedom of religion for us anymore. So what are we waging the battles for? If it's not truly for freedom of religion, what our forefathers stood for, then what are we going to do? What, what are we waging wars for? You know, they even have in the universities now teaching that our forefathers, um, Washington, Thomas Jefferson, all of them, of course, I know that many people say they're Masons and, or they were uh, Knights of Templar, things of that nature there. But they are actually called terrorists, being taught in the schools now, terrorists, even those that were devout uh, Christians. And uh, so it's interesting to see how that things are changing. Verse 12 says, I will make a man more uh, precious than... F uh, uh, excuse me. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a, uh, a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore I will shake the heavens and the earth it shall remove out of her place and in the wrath of the Lord of hosts in the days of his fierce anger. And it shall be as the chaste roe as a sheep that no man taketh up. Now I thought that was interesting, the sheep that no man taketh up. It's kind of like when the scripture says that they're like sheep that have gone astray with no shepherd. That's pretty much the way the churches have gone. They've gone back to Mother Rome. Instead of leading the sheep to the true pastors to feed them the green grass of God's Word, they've taken them back to the harlot instead. What a shame. Anyway, um, it says, They shall every man turn to his own people and flee every one into his own land. 
That's another thing I thought was fascinating. The United States is definitely a nation where we have a lot of people from other lands that come to the U.S. And they're going to flee to their own land. I guess when they see the United States being obliterated by war. Goes on to say, every one that is found shall be thrust through, and every one that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. There's NATO. There's those countries that are joined with them. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes, and their houses shall be spoiled, and their wives ravished. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. You know, the the Medes in, in biblical time is what we would call today modern Turkey and Iran. But clearly, they're not going to carry this out alone. It would take a much larger army. And so it seems reasonable that Russia is definitely involved in this particular war. Now, this saddens my heart tremendously. I've got a lot of family that lives in the United States as well. You know, and to think that a judgment like this is coming. But what else can we say? Now, let me just share with you. Look at verse 19. And Babylon, the glory of the kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldeas, excellency shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, I know Billy Graham joined back up with the, with the Roman Vatican as well a long time ago. But you know, back in his early days, he said one thing that was really interesting. He says, if God doesn't if, if, the, if America does not repent, he will have to raise up Sodom and Gomorrah and apologize to, it, apologize to them for not destroying America, for the sins and the evils that they have, especially in light of the gospel that has gone through forth, gone through, or gone forth through the United States. The gospel was preached everywhere, and yet there's more sin in America than probably practically any other country in the world. I mean, I know there's a lot of godly Christian people still there. Don't get me wrong. But unfortunately, there's a lot, though, that are not. And that's where this judgment is coming, coming out at. Now, if you drop down into verse 14, though, I want to take you a little bit more into this so you understand. And, and there again, I, I trust this is not the case, but it certainly seems that it may very well be. And, and I'm not saying this as an absolute. I'm sharing with you what I'm seeing here and wondering, could this be? So please don't take this as a doctrine. I don't know for sure. I'm just looking at this. Now, what I'll share with you in, in, in chapter 14, though, as far as Rome, that I feel very confident about. Let's look at verse 1. For the Lord will have yet uh, yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to, to the house of Jacob. It's interesting, isn't it? Sounds like there might be some Gentiles going with Israel when they return to their own homeland. That may have nothing, a, a little bit to do with the other part in chapter 13 where it says every man will turn, return to his own land. So, but the strangers that have joined with them, is that the ten men of, uh, of each of the nations that, that join with the, take hold of the skirt of a Jew and says, we've heard the Lord is with you, we'll go with you? Maybe so, I'm not sure. But anyway, we see that also in verse 2, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for, 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 this, uh, for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. How even the house of Israel is returning home. All right, let's drop down to verse 4. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. Now we're talking about the king of Babylon. You see, Babylon, like I said, is a huge region. But the king lives in one little bitty country. You'll take up this proverb of the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased? Even the United States is looked at as a golden city. Of course, Rome is the true golden city. The United States, is they should call it the paper city if you're going to look at that biblically. It says in verse 5, The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Hmm. Drop down to verse 10. 
and they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? See, because all the other nations are poor. But normally, the U.S. and NATO, their allies, especially the, the richer countries like Germany and, 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 and England and, and all these wealthy nations, you know, they have all the pomp and gaiety of the world. Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials, or kind of like harps, uh, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which does weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. That's the Vatican. The sides of the north. You know, Israel being the focal point right there. And Rome is literally northwest of Israel, of Jerusalem, in the sides of the north. Think about that. Sides of the north over to the left side and north of Jerusalem. Okay, so he says in verse 14, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Claims to be like God. A vicar. That's what they, that's what they call the Pope. He is the vicar of Christ instead of Christ. He stands in God's place on earth. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? Do you know why they asked that question? Because they would have never guessed it, that the Pope of Rome is actually the Antichrist. He looks too humble. He looks like too nice of a guy. It's the same thing with Judas Issachar. Judas Issachar was one of the twelve. You've got to remember, if God is going to repeat history, and the Bible has compound revelations and compound fulfillments, if Judas was the one that betrayed Yeshua, then there's going to be one of so-called of the apostles that is going to betray him again. Think about that. Do you know even in the Essenes writing, they actually speak about a successor of Peter that would become a wicked one, and he would be the one that would cause all of everything to go down. Now, I just find it interesting. I don't say that, I can't say the authenticity of that because I've never got to see it from the Dead Sea Scrolls. All I can tell you is what I have seen, and it's clearly the Vatican, is, according to, to what I read there, that's prophetic. And that being prophetic, we're seeing Rome line up perfectly with that prophecy. But anyway, like I said, I, can't, I cannot, you know, I, I, I know that the Bible here I got, I, I got confidence in this. You know, I know that there's mistranslations and stuff like that. You know, that there are mistakes that were made, intentionally or not intentionally, but still, I know it's the Word of God. And I know the way to Christ, I'm not going to, I'm not going to veer, veer off in getting there. Anyway, though, back again. So they look upon him and they said, is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms? They're in disbelief. They don't, they can't hardly believe it was the Pope. Everybody was thinking it's going to be some Muslim guy or, or some Arab guy or some... Now, now they're coming up with the guy from Greece, the new leader of Greece now. Or, 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 or what about the, 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 the Persia or the, the Jordan, King Jordan uh, Hussein? Maybe it's him or, or maybe it's Prince Harry. But you look at the Pope. And because the whole world has been deceived in believing a lie to start with, and the Bible says because they love the, a lie more than the truth, God will give them a strong delusion to let them believe the lie. And that is happening. You're seeing a worldwide move of a delusion believing that what? That, 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 where their people are believing that this is the Antichrist. That there's some kind of Muslim guy or, or something over here or some Jewish guy or whatever. And it's right under your nose. 
Verse 17, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his prisoners. Yes, he's using NATO and their allies, the U.S. as the leader, to destroy the world. Do you know Americans probably would not get involved in Ukraine whatsoever? They were a diplomatic nation. I know that Russia keeps meddling in their politics as well over there, and that's always an issue, no doubt about it. And I know the Western Ukraines don't want anything to do with the Eastern Ukraines. That's why I say divide the country and be done with it. Let the Western people have their way of life and the Eastern people have their way of life. But no, the United States, not you. Let me, let me correct that. The Obama administration, who's the puppet to the Vatican, can't let well enough alone. Not the American people. Many of the American people would just rather stay out of all this nonsense, just like we, don't want, to, we want to stay out of Iraq. You know, I support the part, part about going into Iraq to liberate Kuwait when they got taken over. Yes, those people wanted to be free. They wanted to be liberated. But do we have to topple every country in the world? Verse 18, and all the kings of the, oh, by the way, I'm sorry. Op, notice also in, in this other part in verse 17, open not the house of his prisoners. Do you know who does not open the house of their prisoners? It's Rome. If a nun, a woman goes in there and, joy, and, and takes the black veil and goes into a cloistered convent, she is a prisoner to that church for the rest of her life. And whether she wants to come out or not, she is never going to come out. Did you know that? Most people don't even know that. They don't even know that a cloistered convent nun becomes a prisoner the rest of her life. There is no diplomatic way for her to get out. Only the, there's been a few that escape that you can get their testimonies online. Just, go, just type it in. Just put in there, none escape cloistered convent, Catholic Church. They don't release their prisoners. And it's kind of funny. The United States under uh, George Bush did the same thing at Guantanamo Bay. You know, they bring all these people in and they say they're terrorists and they got to interrogate them. But... They're, they get no, no proceeding, no rights, no nothing. They're just prisoners of war, and we can detain them indefinitely. You see, the U.S. adopt the Vatican's policy of taking prisoners and never releasing them. And I don't say they didn't get some bad people. But what about the good people that got taken up in there? That, 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 you know, I, yes, they may be Muslim, but you know, I mean, just because they're Muslim doesn't mean that I want to hate a person because they're Muslim. You know, if he's got a different belief than I do, that's his right. He has a right. That's freedom of religion. You know, as long as he's not trying to kill me and kill my family or kill our, kill our people in our nation, you know, if he wants to be that, that's his way of doing it, then by all means, go right ahead. That's what freedom of religion should be. In fact, if Iran and Iraq and all these other countries would practice the same thing and let the Christian people practice their religion, free, uh, have freedom of religion as well, it'd be a lot better world to live in. Wouldn't be so much killing going on. But thou art cast out of thy grave like, a, like an abominable branch, and as a remnant, those that are slain. Notice he called him an abominable branch. See, because he's claims to be in the place of Christ. In Christ, Yeshua is the righteous branch. So it's another key to let, or another mystery un, unfolded before you to let you know who the guy is. He's not the righteous branch, Christ Jesus, in this case here, he's the abominable branch. The Antichristo, the one that is like Christ, but not really Christ. The viker, as they write on there, vic vicarious filia dilia, instead of the Son of God, the abominable branch. You're cast out. The rent, um, as the raiment, as those that are slain, thrust through with a sword and go down to the stones of the pit and a carcass trodden underfoot. The Bible said, he that kills by the sword shall die by the sword. The sword is the word of God, and they used the word of God and killed millions, millions of people using the Bible. And so God used the word to take their life. 
Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for this children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the whole world with cities. You see what he's talking about there? You see that? You see how he's talking about? They don't get the possession. See, it shows that they're religious. They were claiming to get it. They were claiming to be, uh, you know, a, 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 they'll, they'll never see widowhood. They'll always be married to Christ, but she's a whore in the sight of God. Revelation 18, I believe in 16, is a, is a verse that would type that out as well. Okay, prepare slaughter for his children. For the, okay, we already read that. Verse 22, for I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. I will also make its possessions for the bitter and the pools of water, and I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. Uh, verse 24 and 25, and we'll close there. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, to, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand, that I will break the Assyrian in my land and upon my mountains, tread him underfoot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them and his burden depart from off their shoulders. Thank God that that, will, that burden will depart. Anyway, God bless you. I, I trust that this news portion has been a blessing to you, this prophetic segment. Don't forget, we'll be coming to the United States. We need your help in making this trip possible uh, because we've got to still get back home as well after we're done, and, and we have not been able to cover that cost as of yet there. So uh, you can go online to israelreturns.com or israelinewslive.org. There is a donate button there if you would like to help us in, in making this possible. We will be exposing who this Antichrist is. We will be doing it in visual as well. And for those of you sisters that have always wanted to hear my wife speak publicly, she will be speaking as well on Saturday uh, towards the end of the conference there. Powerful insight there on women and women in the Bible there. It'll be a blessing, no doubt. So anyway, God bless you and thank you for watching. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.